Dream Chaser, an icon of the legendary space shuttle, was eagerly anticipated to replace the Starliner and usher NASA back to the golden era of four decades ago. Unfortunately, the journey has not gone as smoothly as expected. After years of development, Dream Chaser not only has set to make it into orbit, but has consistently delayed its launch schedule since 2021. However, in fact, the reason for these delays is not solely attributed to Dream Chaser and Sierra Space. So, why was Dream Chaser delayed? How has NASA reacted to this? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of AlphaTech. A new commercial spacecraft developed by Sierra Space, set to restore the ability to transport experiments and equipment from the ISS through the Earth's atmosphere to land on the runway, is called Dream Chaser. The plane can host 3 to 7 members and up to 5,443 kilograms of cargo, transporting it all to pivotal stops in low Earth orbit, including the ISS. Think of Dream Chaser's story as a tale that unfolds over the years, starting way back to the early 2000s. It was created to change how we explore space, but its journey hasn't been easy. It's faced lots of challenges to become a symbol of the United States. A pivotal moment in this journey unfolded in 2016 when NASA, recognizing the potential and innovation encapsulated in Dream Chaser, awarded it one of the coveted Commercial Resupply Service II contracts. This marked a commitment from NASA to purchase a minimum of six resupply missions to the ISS, solidifying Dream Chaser's role in the future of space logistics. However, as the intricate puzzle of Dream Chaser's trajectory unfolded, a significant piece was the selection of its launch vehicle, the promising ULA's Vulcan Centaur. The challenges began to surface as the United States Air Force introduced new requirements in 2018 through the National Security Space Launch Agreement. These additional requisites, intended to enhance security and reliability, inadvertently contributed to delays in Vulcan's initial launch schedule. The ambitious timeline initially aimed for Vulcan to take flight by 2019, but a series of adjustments and postponements pushed the milestone to April of 2021. The web of challenges continue to grow as other complications intertwine with Vulcan's development. In 2021, Astrobotic, one of the maiden flight's payload providers, signaled the need for more time to prepare a payload, further delaying Vulcan's inaugural launch to 2022 and then later 2023. Concurrently, complications including delays in the development of BE-4 engines contributed to the grounded state of rockets that was scheduled to lift off in 2019. The domino effect of these delays was palpable, extending its reach to the meticulous dance of payload preparation. As the companies handling the payloads dealt with their issues, it created a ripple effect that messed up the well-planned schedule for getting Vulcan ready for Dream Chaser's mission. These delays in getting the payloads ready ended up being crucial in the bigger story of Dream Chaser's space journey. All the challenges faced by spacecraft and its launch vehicle are like reminders that reaching for the stars involves overcoming obstacles and every step forward is a win for human creativity in the vastness of space. In fact, the biggest issue with delay of Dream Chaser, and possibly not the last, is its dedicated vehicle, Vulcan Centaur as it mirrors a woven tapestry with unforeseen challenges. One of the notable chapters in this saga is marked by the explosion of Vulcan's upper stage tank during testing, a setback that sent ripples of uncertainty through the mission's trajectory. The revelation by ULA CEO Tori Bruno regarding an anomaly in the tank's structural article during qualification testing led to a meticulous investigation. The intricacies of this setback revealed stress risers near the tank's forward dome, a critical component made of thin stainless steel. Consequently, the nearly flight-ready Vulcan test article had to be transported back to the factory for intricate repairs. Most recently, on the 27th, Tori Bruno tweeted saying, Looks like Vulcan Cert 1 First Flight Centaur 5 and final assembly in the new CV IACO line at Decatur. Hashtag Vulcan Rocket. Vulcan is coming. Despite this setback, Tori Bruno remains steadfast in his commitment to the mission's success, expressing confidence in the completion of Vulcan's maiden flight by December. This declaration, however, hinges on the assumption that no further complications arise, acknowledging the volatile nature of rocket development. As the schedules approach the anticipated time frame, uncertainties linger like shadows in the vast cosmic expanse. ULA is intent on flying two certification missions of the large rocket so it can complete paperwork for the U.S. Space Force and begin launching lucrative missions for the military. The company was supposed to start doing so last year and it started to come under significant pressure from Space Force officials to deliver. The U.S. military is ULA's most important customer. 
The nominal plan for these certification launches entails flying Astrobotics Lunar Lander on the CERT-1 mission in May and Dream Chaser on CERT-2 in August. During a teleconference with reporters about a few months ago, ULA CEO Tori Bruno insisted that this schedule would allow Vulcan to become certified and fly its first national security mission at the end of the year, out in quarter four. Yet on this nominal plan, if Astrobotic flies in May and Dream Chaser isn't scheduled to fly in December, there'd be no chance to fly a national security mission this year. After the second certification mission, there'll need to be, at a minimum, a few months for the government to analyze data and declare Vulcan fit for high-value, high-performance missions. That's why the scheduled launch of Dream Chaser in late 2023 may be the most optimistic plan, but not guaranteed. Who knows if Vulcan has enough time to explore the technology processing and test for unforeseen challenges during execution. To be honest, the potential impacts of the schedule on the second Vulcan launch could extend the mission to 2024, painting a picture of a dance where any mistake could lead to delays and challenges for Sierra Nevada Corporation and the entire Dream Chaser mission. So, can Vulcan fulfill its mission? Why didn't Sierra Nevada Corporation or SNC choose another rocket as an alternative? Many have asked this question. Let's go back to the time before SNC chose the launch vehicle for Dream Chaser. In the context of choosing many among launch vehicles, the choice of Vulcan Centaur emerged as a result of a comprehensive assessment. SNC, the driving force behind Dream Chaser, delved into the details of various launch vehicles, exploring possibilities that span beyond the American borders. European and Japanese launch vehicles, namely the Ariane 6 and H3, entered the arena as contenders. Even the visionary founders of SpaceX and Blue Origin, Elon and Bezos, with their respective launch vehicles, were part of the extensive evaluation process. As the deliberations unfolded, it became evident that safety, reliability, and competitive pricing stood out as paramount considerations in the decision-making matrix. Reliability, an essential tenet in the unforgiving expanse of space, played a crucial role in ensuring the success of Dream Chaser's missions to the ISS. Competitive pricing emerged not merely as a cost consideration, but as a strategic advantage. The economic viability of the launch vehicle had to be harmoniously balanced with its technical prowess, ensuring that the venture remained financially sustainable without compromising the mission's integrity. The collaboration with ULA, rooted in long-standing relationship dating back to NASA's commercial crew program, held a unique advantage. The Atlas V, an existing ULA vehicle, was considered initially for Dream Chaser's maiden mission, showcasing the depth of the partnership. However, as the stakes and ambitions rose with the CRS-2 contracts, the focus shifted to ULA's cutting-edge Vulcan Centaur. At that time, the core factor of safety aligned with stringent standards for space exploration, where precision and predictability were non-negotiable. Despite the uncertainty, this was the choice that I have felt is best for the program, said John Curry, Dream Chaser CRS2 Program Director at SNC. Overall, there's still a lot to do for the Vulcan rocket, and whether Dream Chaser's timeline can be guaranteed depends on ULA's progress. If ULA's Vulcan rocket can't meet the requirements, Dream Chaser still has a safer alternative, the workhorse of SpaceX Falcon. Dream Chaser was designed and can carry a maximum weight of 15.7 tons. In expendable mode, a Falcon 9 can transport 22.8 tons of fuel to land on the planet. Because the Dream Chaser could be lifted from the LEO to the Falcon, a Falcon could easily lift it to the LEO. On the Dream Chaser's side, there have been certain noticeable achievements. According to a company announcement, Dream Chaser underwent its first power-up this early summer, where engineers simulated the input power that the spacecraft will generate through its solar array. Additionally, more than 2,000 individual tiles, larger and more robust than those used on the space shuttle, have been meticulously assembled. These tiles are designed to withstand temperatures of up to 2,600 Fahrenheit through multiple re-entry cycles, showcasing the spacecraft's durability. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.